This is a big week. It is Art Basel. I can't take no loss. I don't even know what it costs. I hit the ground and it go off. Yeah, hit the ground and it go off. Yeah, I can't take no loss. So hopefully you enjoy. All right, let's go. You think that unless, again, there is something to the tune of FTX where there was fraud, this is probably the bottom. Because almost every single sign that we saw in 2018, almost every single sign that we saw even in March 2020 is happening. Crypto influencers quitting, you know, companies going insolvent, um, leverage getting wiped up both the visible and the invisible. Um, yeah, I mean, the times when it's the worst is usually also the times when we're getting pretty close. Oh, shit. How you doing, brother? Good, good. Hey, thanks for the time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk soon. Awesome. This is the man, the yeah. organizer. <laughs> Justin Wu, all good, all good. <laughs> making a little vlogging and content. We build into the bear market. It's That's a builder's right. market right now. Builder's market always is. <laughs> Happens every not time. The first time not the first not time. No, I remember back in 2018, we were on the road together. I remember like uh, Amsterdam, Toronto. Yeah, worldwide, you know. I guess I was still super early and we're still early right now. Still so. early, yeah. Especially like the price at like 2018 again. So yeah. time yeah. machine. What? Do you want Mark Zuckerberg to watch the universe? No. Probably not. Unless, unless he buys me out, you know. What kind of uh, projects do you think is gonna win in the next two to three years or next cycle? I mean, it's very broad. I mean, we're gonna have winners in DeFi, we're gonna have winners in the metaverse, we're gonna have winners in Metaverses. web infrastructure. I mean, huh? Of course, yeah, yeah. Even with all the sandbox and... Uh, well, sandbox was bullshit. I mean, they've got like a couple thousand users. The, the, the UI sucks. I mean, nobody plays it for fun. And yet you say metaverse still... Of course. I mean, the metaverse as a categorical theme can win, but that doesn't mean that the early players have to be the winners, you know? Just like Friendster is not the number one social media platform today. I run a Metaverse VC, but my hedge fund is actively shorting stuff like Sandbox. If a game has to pay its players to play it, it there's no future. It should be so good that people are willing to pay for it. You can still make it free, but like they should be willing to pay for it. All right, all right, all right. Let's go, we're gonna go on the Paul Barron show. Doing our second podcast with him. Um, just had a little break. Crap, I cannot grab a bite to eat without, without getting pulled into an unofficial interview. How are you? Good to see you again. Your portfolio, uh, Neurable, which one is this? Neurable, so that's uh, the, one of the, our access points investments. That actually doesn't have a token. It's a, it's a brain computer face. We're able to control virtual experiences using brain waves. Sounds crazy. So Lounge red right by Peter Thiel. Neuralink S. What sector are you watching right now for next level? Yep. So, you, you know, you're harvesting, you're looking for the right yep. talent, the right teams. AI generated content. That's gonna um, be huge. Yeah. Because like, you know, stage one was, let's say, you know, somebody builds themselves an, uh, a world, a sandbox. Stage two is you say like, I want the world to look like this. Bigger. It generates it yeah, for you. Just automatic. That's when it gets a little scary, but at the same time, yeah. kind of fun. But that's also when this metaverse becomes as real as physical reality, right. because when you walk outside, the water doesn't always move the same way. The trees don't always shake the same way. Yeah. The weather's not always the same. And so once you integrate AI into that, it becomes just as lively and unpredictable. Well, speed the market now. Yep. Just finished up a lot of the work at the office. Had to work on the Red Plus V. Talked to one of our portfolio. Talked to two of our portfolio funds today, AJ and Todd. And now we're going to the two opening events for both the Central Con and then Web3 Summit. So it's a good quick dinner. Talk to their speakers and yeah, network a little, little bit. Oh, you do? Awesome. Nice to meet you. Yeah. So if it makes a new low, do you add to your position or do you just sell, sell it and say, fuck it, uh, it's making a new low? I don't think I'll tell. So I mean, my, my strategy in the, since Q3 has been long short. So what we've been doing is we're, we're long Ethereum and we're shorting all, all kinds of Ponzi's. We've been shorting like Axie, Sandbox, Steppen, and so forth. And that's done phenomenally well. I mean, we were... We were the number one performing crypto fund in July, the second best performing crypto fund in August, and the number one performing crypto fund in October based on Galaxy's Vision Track rankings. Oh, uh, GMX. GMX. GMX, yeah, that, that's our biggest spot position. So, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. GMX, that, that's done well this year. We bought it like 17, now it's like 44 or so. Are you guys involved in Yeah. Best trade ever. We, I bought it. That means you were short. No, I, I bought it 20 cents and I sold it $85. <laughs> Firm-wide, about 130. And so, because I, I, I built this from scratch. Like when I was, when I first started, it was $200,000. I've been keeping track of you for the, like the past two years. Oh, really? I, I, I appreciate that. You no, know, I listen to you on Twitter all the time. Yeah. I'm actually on the side that I say, less regulation would have been better than more regulation. FTX wouldn't have happened if the US wouldn't have kicked 
everybody offshore. The only reason all these US funds that money on FTX are they going to Binance is because, you know, Coinbase can't even offer any kind of leverage, right? Like Coinbase and Kraken run very clean businesses, but they don't run strong enough businesses that anybody can use them. Over indexing to now, like if the pendulum swings too much on more regulation, that's only gonna make the problem worse. Why? Because like, if, let's, let's say even more crypto becomes illegal in the US, then just more people use Binance. And nobody knows what the fuck's going on in Binance. Right? So it would be better if they, if regulators were friendlier and said like, hey, how can we work with Coinbase to create a safer environment, a better environment that people feel comfortable actually using Coinbase over Binance? Alrighty. So we're wrapping up the day and we'll just get back. Um, it's been a long, long day.